I want to um, focus on one area uh, uh, that is the relationship between uh, U.S. rebalancing and the cross relations uh, in this uh, the larger theme of this conference. And uh, my comment, uh, if I, I should uh, qualify by saying that even though uh, 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 Minister Yang and I have been the friends for a long time, but today I speak as a scholar, so uh, my views may not be the same. But I think that it is an academic forum, so we should. Uh, 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 consider all viewpoints. Um, I think I'll start with a puzzle that a lot of people believe that Obama administration's uh, pivot now called rebalancing uh, is based on the acknowledgement that Asia holds the key to the economic security futures of the United States, uh, adjust to the sh shifting power balance caused by the 2008 global financial crisis and response to China's asserted foreign and economic military policy beginning in 2010. This much we agree, and in fact, this is very clear from three uh, defining documents, uh, namely uh, uh, former Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton's article in Foreign Affairs in November 2011, uh, President Obama's speech at the Australian Parliament uh, that same month, and then the speech by former uh, National Security Advisor Thomas Donnellan. Uh, in to, uh, March 2013 to the Asia Society. I consider these three documents the so-called canons of the pivot. And of, although uh, many people in this room and including myself think that uh, Taiwan should uh, have a prominent place in this policy because it obviously geographically is important, uh, economically it, it is important, and uh, that uh, uh, people, you know, uh, in, on this coast also think that it is important because of the extensive cultural and personal ties. However, in those three documents, Taiwan was mentioned zero times, not a single time, although uh, as Minister Yang uh, correctly pointed out, Hillary Clinton did mention uh, in uh, uh, July 2011 that Taiwan is important security and uh, economic partner. Uh, of course, uh, in politics, you know, sometimes you need to count these number of times. So my question is, what explained this official silence? And a larger question is uh, just exactly where does Taiwan fit in, uh, if at all, the U.S. Pacific pivot uh, policy? And how will the <coughs> evolution of cross-strait relations actually impact the U.S. rebalancing and vice versa? <coughs> <clears throat> I thought I would begin uh, with a uh, sort of an analogy that is be careful what you're wishing for because it might come true. The reason I say this is that uh, um, the United States uh, since uh, 1979 with the transfer of diplomatic uh, relations or maybe one push a little further uh, or maybe you know, back to the, the Cold War we can say that the United States uh, had a very defined uh, mission that is the operational concern was actually to prevent the PRC's forceful unification of Taiwan. And in terms of strategy, it ex uh, basically adopted an extended deterrence vis-a-vis -vis the PRC. And then uh, uh, with, with respect to Taiwan, uh, basically uh, it's a strategic ambiguity. Um, and the, the, the strategic ambiguity is uh, actually very ambiguous uh, that uh, uh, former Secretary, Assistant Secretary of, of State for East Asia and Pacific Affairs, James Kelly, one time he was asked, uh, can you explain what this policy is? Uh, he, can, uh, he said, I cannot explain, uh, I cannot exp uh, define this uh, to you, but basically uh, I can define what is not uh, for you. So uh, former Assistant Secretary of uh, Defense, uh, Joseph Nye, uh, had this operationalization. So basically we tell uh, China, don't attack Taiwan, uh, because you do, uh, don't count us out. And we tell Taiwan, don't provoke China into attacking you because you cannot count us in. Something like that. So it's sort of the <laughs> ambiguity. You get the idea. And in the meantime, we, uh, the United States tell uh, both sides of Taiwan Strait not to change, quote unquote, the status quo. The status quo is also one of those most befuddled concepts. I don't like that at all because it's basically a legal limbo to put Taiwan in and we say uh, to uh, China and Taiwan not to change that. Uh, in the meantime, the, uh, the United States officially encouraged uh, cross-strait uh, dialogue. We think that talk is better than no talk, and the talk will lead to a reduction of uh, tension and so on. We also stress the pro uh, process over the outcome. We always say, in the three communiques with the PRC, we always say that uh, we hope the, the two sides of the Taiwan Strait will engage in a, 
uh, peaceful uh, dialogue leading to a peaceful resolution of disputes or peaceful settlement and so on. We never endorse a particular outcome. Of course, the Chinese always think that we have endorsed peaceful unification, which is conceivably only one of the possible uh, outcomes. However, uh, since 2008, um, the cross-strait relations have undergone uh, a lot of changes, uh, mostly for the better. Uh, uh, of course, cross-strait relations, as Minister Yang mentioned, now is uh, closer than ever in terms of economic and human ties and so on. And Taiwan Strait once was called a uh, flashpoint. Nobody thinks that military uh, escalation is possible today. However, there is now a new concern, that is whether the cross-strait reconciliation is proceeding too fast. In fact, the, this question uh, was first posed by Georgetown professor Nancy Tucker. Uh, in 2002, she asked uh, if in, in the past we worry about uh, China uh, taking over Taiwan, but now if Taiwan would one day uh, be willingly, peacefully be absorbed by China, should we care? Uh, she was the first person to ask that question. And in fact, for as far as the US uh, uh, decision makers are concerned, uh, their roles are less clear. When the, Chi when the Chinese on both sides of the Taiwan Strait are talking, what exactly is the role for the United States? In the past, we're preventing uh, the Chinese from using force. Now, exactly now what, uh, what the Americans can do. And also, some people ask, should the United States begin to also care about the outcome? In other words, if the two sides can lead to some kind of a modus vivendi, should the United States uh, uh, worry that this kind of outcome might be uh, good or bad for U.S. national interest. There has been no such discussion so far. Maybe the PACCON have some kind of uh, scenarios, but we don't know. Those are classified. Um, I won't say very much about the pivot. I think m most people know that um, the, the, the uh, six pillars uh, explained by uh, uh, former Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton, which was summarized by, um, anyway, uh, Michael Swain into three, strengthening of U.S. bilateral alliances and security partnership in the region, more intensive engagement with the emerging powers of the region, most notably uh, China, India, and the Indonesia, or the BRICS, or so-called the G20 countries, and more active and direct participation in the development of regional multilateral institutions, especially in realms of uh, economics, diplomacy, and security. Donald Lund called this building the so-called regional architecture. And uh, Sari already mentioned the TPP as the economic pillar of the pivot. And of course, you can also think about the security pillar and the diplomatic pillar as, as well. Um, why, how do we explain the, uh, the silence, official silence on Taiwan? Um, I, uh, I, have not, uh, I have not discussed with uh, Kurt Campbell, although uh, Clay uh, know that we tried to invite him. Uh, but I will verify this. So uh, all these are my, just my educated guess. Scholars are free to, to free think, right? So uh, uh, I think there are three possible explanations. The first uh, uh, theory is, the, so, uh, is, is the, the reason that the United States official documents have not mentioned uh, Taiwan in its pivot policy is the lost cause thesis, da shi yi qu lun. Or you can say it's basically the US is going to pursue pivot without Taiwan. There are two schools of thoughts on this. Some in the United States are worried that Taiwan is already too much into China's uh, ambit. Taiwan has, be in fact, become a strategic liability uh, for the United States. Therefore, the United States cannot plan its pivot with Taiwan, uh, thinking about Taiwan. Uh, there are also other people uh, who argue that uh, for 60 years, we have encouraged uh, cross-strait uh, dialogue, and now they are talking. Isn't that good for the United States? If the, if the two sides can reach some kind of a agreement, we can wash our hands and go away and declare victory. In fact, the quote unquote, the loss of Taiwan will not be inimical to U.S. core interests. There are some people, who, you know, the most ridiculous example is that uh, uh, so-called scholar at Harvard University who said, you know, we can uh, give away Taiwan uh, so that China can forgive our $1.4 trillion national debt <laughs> in that year, right? So, so, so you can, you can, you can, uh, you, can um, uh, you can mock these uh, 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 ideas as ridiculous, but I think that there is actually a, a threat there that the people, some Americans are willing to sell out Taiwan. Therefore, they cannot plan pivot with Taiwan. Second possible explanation 
is what I would call the fate undetermined thesis or Shang Wei Ding Lun Shuo. That is to say, the United States uh, have not reached a position on whether to include Taiwan or not. And we have to, to we carry out pivot first, and then we consider Taiwan. Cross-strait re, uh, reconciliation is uh, relatively new. It's been there for five years. The United States is still carefully assessing the net benefits and costs to the United States. For example, ECFA, when it was signed in 2010, uh, a, a State Department official say, officially we welcome this, but we have to sit down and analyze the, ben the benefits and costs to the United States. Also, uh, 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 Minister Yang uh, mentioned the 1954 uh, ROC-USA Mutual Defense Treaty. But you know that it in, in 1950, North Korea in, uh, invaded uh, South Korea, and the Truman administration changed its position on Taiwan overnight and dispatched the Seventh Fleet and so on. But it was not until 1954 did the two countries sign the ROC uh, USA Mutual Defense Treaty. So there's a, there's a lapse about four or five years. So according to this theory, the Obama administration have not, uh, uh, it may take a few years for the US government to finally include uh, Taiwan in the pivot. So th therefore this silence, this reticence is actually strategic, basically wait and see. And a third possible uh, explanation is the so-called tacit alliance thesis, or yin xin tong meng lun. That is to say, the United States is basically pivoting with Taiwan, indeed, if not in words. The reason we cannot say this is because uh, there's a diplomatic uh, protocol. All those three documents I mentioned are official documents. The, the United States obviously cannot say something about this with a country with which it has no diplomatic relations. And Raymond Berga, who is the uh, uh, chairman of the American Institute in Taiwan, which represents the United States, says that the discretion is actually our biggest enemy. He, th he claims that a lot of things can be done but cannot be said. But of course, for the public, we really want to know more. And that is his dilemma. And I think that in the US-Taiwan relations, because the relationship is asymmetrical, so uh, that, that, that also created a little problem. Kurt Campbell, in a testimony at Congress in March 2012, said that we have strengthened our unofficial relationship with Taiwan, and he gave a lot of examples in, in terms of political ties, economic ties, and security ties. Political ties, obviously, the most credible signal was the passage of the visa waiver program, VWP. So Taiwan now is the, 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 the newest 37th uh, country, uh, Ty, uh, the United States Grand VIP, and the only one without, without a diplomatic relationship. And there are also some people uh, who are urging the Obama administration to uh, th uh, revisit the Taiwan issue. So the last time there has been a Taiwan policy review, it was 1994 during the Clinton administration. So it's been 20 years. It was that time the office of Taiwan's diplomatic mission was changed to Taipei Economic and Cultural Office. Before that, it was CCNNN. So is it time to change to something even more descriptive uh, called maybe like Taiwan Institute in America or something like that? Economic ties, uh, you know, Taiwan and United States uh, remain uh, close economic uh, uh, partners. Uh, however, the importance of the United States to Taiwan uh, has declined uh, you know, since uh, the 1980s. In 1980s, uh, the, U the U.S. was the number one trading partner of, the U of Taiwan and absorbed 40 percent of its uh, exports. Today, 40 percent of Taiwan's trade is with China. But of course, Taiwan is not alone. Uh, the, the, the China has actually replaced the United States as the number one trading partner with just about every Asian partners of the United States. So, and security ties. Uh, and Minister Yang will know a lot more. Uh, I, I don't know if he has any constraint, but anyway, in this re regard, the U.S. and Taiwan have actually improved their cooperation a lot, and not just in terms of uh, hardware, but also in terms of software, <coughs> intelligence sharing, personnel exchange, and so on. So finally, where does Taiwan fit in the U.S. Pacific pivot, if at all? I think in terms of its geopolitical position, it is hard, simply hard to imagine if the Obama administration is serious about a pivot policy, it's just Im hard to imagine a, a pivot policy can succeed without including Taiwan. The, the geography cannot change. 
economically, uh, Taiwan is very important, uh, and you know Taiwan can uh, and and Taiwan can play a lot of useful roles. And for reasons, uh, uh, Professor uh, Katara already mentioned that this TPP uh, should also be a very good place for the United States and Taiwan to cooperate. And cross-strait reconciliation obviously uh, advance uh, U.S. national interest because the U.S. does not have to worry about two wars at the same time, one in the Middle East, one uh, in the uh, Western Pacific. However, even friends uh, uh, need some confidence building. I like to believe that the U.S.-Taiwan relations are the best ever in 30 years. Uh, but I think that uh, as Taiwan is engaging in deeper stage of uh, political talk with China, it should keep uh, its most important uh, security partner and friend, the United States, informed so that there be no surprise. So how can Taiwan contribute and benefit from the U.S. pivot? So it's both ways. I think Taiwan should strengthen its self-defense. There can be no uh, uh, weakest link. It, it should manage its dependence on the mainland. Uh, I think that uh, obviously if you, uh, if you are entirely dependent on the mainland, then you ob obviously lose your leverage. It also avoid impression of parallel diplomatic stances, for example, East China Sea and South China Sea, uh, with, uh, because uh, on, on these issues, the United States actually has two treaty allies, namely Japan and the Philippines. So Taiwan should be uh, careful and better coordinate uh, the stances. And in fact, that, uh, the, I, I would agree that the Taiwanese and the Japanese fishery agreement uh, was a success and a good example. And in fact, Taiwan uh, can also benefit from the U.S. demonstration effect. If Taiwan is deemed more important under the rebalancing uh, uh, policy, then more countries will bestow the recognition and respect for Taiwan because the U.S. is simply so important. So finally, my uh, adv advice for Taiwan is that as, you, as Taiwan uh, uh, begins uh, pursuing a deeper stage of political talk with, with, uh, with China, uh, it has to pursue what I would call the Goldilocks strategy. Not too fast, not too slow, and always keep the United States informed. Thank you.